Many of you wonderful longtime viewers on my channel know of my lifelong, everlasting love of Transformers. And there's certainly more of those videos coming down the road. However, much in the same way that first love you have in your youth remains forever special, you grow and mature as a person, and eventually you run into that next love. In it, you often recognize many of the wonderful qualities that attract you to the first, and yet, there's also something new, something wonderful, some other qualities that show you another side of life, that teach you something more, that ignite in you a completely different passion that drives you. Now, in the 80s, there were so many awesome shows to watch, so many great cartoons to choose from as your favorite. G.I. Joe, Silverhawks, He-Man, Thundercats, Galaxy Rangers, Mask, Voltron. Truly our cup runneth over at the time. Of course, my absolute favorite was that first love, Transformers. Yet there was this other cartoon around that my brother and I would watch. It also had transforming robots, but with these pilots that seemed like cool dudes. And like, sometimes they'd fight these crab-like alien beings. And there were also these giant people for some reason. And every now and then some motorcycles would transform too, or whatever. Honestly, I really didn't know what was going on. I sort of caught it sporadically at the time, but I loved it. All I knew was that Skyfire was in it. Or, no, wait. I mean, Jetfire was in it, because Skyfire's toy was called Jetfire, but his toy looked like the planes on this crazy show for some reason. I don't know, I was like six years old. My focus was on Transformers and learning to read and work the VCR on my own and stuff like that. Really, there were just so many cool shows on, who could keep track of them all? Well, a few years later, when I was about eight, around the time you start having sleepovers with your buddies and stay up all night watching videos your parents rented for you from the store, my pal David came over. He brought with him his G.I. Joe General, and I had my Fortress Maximus fight it. It was an epic battle. At the video store, on my brother Matt's suggestion, we picked out Robotech Volume 1. Hey, that ring a bell. I used to love that show. David and Matt Matt and I threw it into the VCR at home right away, and I was absolutely enthralled watching it. This Volume 1 collected the first six episodes of Robotech, put together like a big two-hour movie, and it was simply amazing to me. More amazing than any recollection I'd had of it from watching on TV a few years before. Not only were the transforming jets cool, the spaceships, the animation, the bad guys. And I really loved these characters, characters like Roy Foker, Lisa Hayes, Retai, Captain Glovel, and of course, Rick Hunter. I absolutely empathized with Rick, his life, his attitude, his outlook, and of course, his infatuation with Lin Min May. I was only eight years old, but I had already had a crush or two by then. Like, I got it, you know? Watching Rick get caught up in an unimaginable war between an entire fleet of destructive alien warships held back by Earth's one and only defender, the Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, or 
SDF-1 for short. I just constantly couldn't wait to see what happened next. When the tape ended, I rewound it and played the whole thing again, all while David and I played in the background. The thing is, I think I did this at least three or four more times before the end of that night, which I think started to annoy David. You want to watch it again? He has since forgiven me in recent years, I'm happy to say. But yeah, I, I couldn't get enough. Unfortunately, our local video store only had that one tape. I was dying to see what happened next after Rick finally joins the Defense Forces at the end of Volume 1. Luckily, my big brother Matt was a teenager by then, and he and his other teenage friends had a greater range of travel and procurement than little old me. Robotech wasn't exactly widely available or easy to come by, but somehow, Matt's legendary friend, whom, for the sake of anonymity, we'll just call Bash. Bash found some hidden gem of a video store that had Volume 2, Volume 3, and so on. So, whenever Bash got to come sleep over and hang out with Matt, they'd let me tag along and watch the latest tape of Robotech that Bash had brought with him. There was so much to this show. The twists, the turns, the melodrama, and of course, the action. There were these themes about fighting, about war, about defending your homeland, but also about why we fight, if we even should, leading to themes of loss, acceptance, and learning new cultures. The motifs of love and music and what music stirs in us all are pervasive in Robotech, and even more so in Macross, from which Robotech derives, and we will touch on Macross a bit, but I'd like to focus on this Robotech incarnation of it. I wouldn't realize until my adult life how much of an influence this series would have on me, how much it would shape me as a person. The ways that Rick's simple life and narrow outlook grow as he broadens his visions and perspective of the world, the universe, and the friends he makes along the way, as well as those he loses. Not to mention the love that grows in him, the relationships he forms, the way he navigates through them, and the do's and don'ts that I learned of all of that, <laughs> you'll see. All of it was fundamentally formative to me in who I've grown to be. This series has more meaning to me than nearly any other, for many various reasons. It taught me many lessons I still adhere to to this day, and its themes resonate now as much as ever, even 40 years after its initial run on the airwaves. Please join me as we delve into this amazing saga with mecha and spaceships and battles that are as breathtaking as they are devastating. But more than just that, it's a saga of tragedy, of hubris, of connection with those around us, of love and loss, of realizing your enemy is far more human than you could have ever believed. Let's take a look back at Rick, Roy, Lisa, Max, Miria, Chiron, and Claudia, and of course, Min Mei, as they all fight to either save our world or utterly destroy it. Come along as we learn that, with hearts that beat as one, we can soar, and with love that conquers all, we'll win this battle. We will win. So, Check your fold systems and get ready to launch all Veritech fighters as we engage in this tale of war and destruction. The story of a love that could never be and a hatred that always was. Throw on your Minmay albums and get ready to switch modes as we find out. Here's why Robotech 
is one of the coolest shows ever. <laughs> <laughs>